My journey in astrophotography involves a lot of tinkering with accessories. I've spent a good amount of money on small parts. From that, I learn what works and does not. And then I repeat the cycle with upgrades. I have been doing this recently with my Move Shoot Move Nomad Star Tracker Imaging Rig configuration. The system is still new to me. On a recent excursion to darker skies in Chiba, Japan, I tested this rig and achieved some surprisingly nice imaging results. Most of the rig configuration I used here was described in a prior video episode. On this particular night, I purposely arrived a bit later in the evening. When I got off the train at about 9.30 p.m. at Ubada Station in the Katsuura district of Chiba, there was not a soul in sight. I had been here several times before and knew what to expect. It was Monday, the train ride was three and a half hours long, and I started my journey during the rush hour crunch at around 5.30 p.m. going straight through the heart of Tokyo. So the eerie desolation of this final destination was relaxing and refreshing. This was going to be another all-night imaging session. From the Bordel Class 9 Tokyo metropolitan area, if you travel in any direction, within a few hours you will reach darker skies. On this night, I went to Ubara on the coast of Chiba where the east and south offered very dark skies and hence my deep sky imaging targets were to be found there. It took nearly 30 minutes to navigate the desolate roads and paths in the dark, through the park, and over to the cliffside viewing area. This was the bell tower overlook on the Ubara Utopia Cape. I knew it well. I assembled my imaging rig and had it ready for polar alignment by 11 p.m. The main reason I came late was because of the moon. It was a 72% waxing gibbous phase and did not set until 1.33 a.m. Because of the wind from the north, I protected my little rig in a low region behind a ridge on the rocky sandstone overlook. My carbon fiber tripod was set up purposely very low for stability and to avoid the breeze. From that low point, I could just barely see Polaris above the crest, which allowed me to do a true polar alignment. All of my imaging on this night was done to the south. This was the first time I used my newly acquired Nomad Polar Scope. Having that right angle viewer was essential because my rig was so low to the ground, it would have not been possible for me to comfortably look through the scope without the angled viewer. I found that the glowing illuminator attachment worked well with my headband red light engaged continuously, providing easy visibility of the reticle and the star Polaris at the same time. Of course, the green laser helped me to roughly align the rig with Polaris, and then the William Optics wedge and Move Shoot Move Polar Scope made it easy to precisely align with the true North Celestial Pole. It took 15 minutes or so, but I was all set. I was ready to go. The next challenge was to find my target, the Christmas tree cluster in Cone Nebula. I was employing my trusty Ascar FMA 135 astrograph lens and the ASI 533MC planetary camera on this night with the Optolong L-Extreme dual narrowband filter. Finding the target was relatively simple by using the aligned green laser pointer that I mounted on top of my rig and the annotation function provided by the ASI Air Plus computer that controlled my camera. The original calibration of my laser was done on M42, the Orion Nebula, since it was so easy to find it in the sky. To find my targets, I took a photo, let the ASI Air annotate it, determined my position based on sky maps, made adjustments, took another photo, and repeated the process. It was straightforward and effective. But frankly, I spent a heck of a long time fine-tuning the field of view to get the target perfectly centered. The field of view is only 4.5 degrees of sky with this rig configuration, 
and making subtle movements with a ball head Arca Swiss clamp is extremely frustrating. I probably wasted 45 minutes just tinkering with the positioning. Of course, if you are employing shorter focal lengths or bigger sensors, the framing activity may not be such a problematic issue for you. After a lot of effort, I finally got it centered and started taking some images. But then I noticed that I had this weird green tint to all of my preview images. I had never seen that before. And this was even using the Optolong L Extreme filter, which should have blocked most of that green light. I started to think something was wrong with my camera. I turned it off and on and unplugged it a few times, hoping the issue would self-correct. But it did not. Well, I finally gave up and started imaging anyways. I was able to capture 60 second images with no star trailing quite consistently. From 12.30 to about 1.30 a.m., I captured one hour of data. At about that time then, the moon was setting and my world was getting much, much darker. Except for some weird green glow that I now could easily see bathing the imaging site. And then it hit me. You idiot. I noticed the annoying green light on the maintenance shed a few hundred meters away and realized the connection. So I inspected my rig very closely and found that my ZWO 2 inch filter drawer was not totally closed and magnetically sealed. It was slightly ajar. Green light was penetrating behind the filter and reflecting on the sensor. Voila, problem solved. Another genius move on my part. This night was not exactly going smoothly so far and I was getting a bit worried. I had wasted one hour of imaging time. It was now 1.30 a.m. But the good news was that the best imaging time, the moon-free time, was still ahead of me. I restarted my imaging rig and this time decided to do 30 second exposures to keep star sizes and trailing to an absolute minimum. I got over 240 good frames for stacking, which was two hours of data. Here is the image of the Christmas tree and cone nebula. Honestly, this photo kind of blew my mind. The colors are fantastic. I have never seen such plentiful colors like this before in any other of my prior images. I think this target is really magnificent at this wide field focal length. And these dark, dark skies over the ocean are certainly a great help. There are a lot of deep sky objects to be found in this image. The designation NGC 2264 identifies two objects together, the Christmas tree cluster and the cone nebula. This is in the constellation of Monoceros, about 2,350 light years distant. This emission nebula is very bright, with an apparent magnitude of about 3.9. From looking at the 30 second subframes, it was impossible to tell if the data I captured was enough. So just in case, I decided to do another target. I selected the Seagull Nebula. Luckily, I was able to get it positioned in my field of view relatively quickly because time was running out. And just before sunup, I collected 120 good images at 30 second exposure times, the last one being at 5.16 a.m. Here is the image of the Seagull Nebula. This nebula is located between Monoceros and Canis Major. It is a hydrogen emission nebula at about 3,650 light years away. The wider image that includes the wings is known as SH2296. It covers over 100 light years from tip to tip. The head like structure of this bird shaped nebula is designated IC2177. The bright central star is HD53367. It is a very hot young star, about 1.5 million years old, that illuminates the nearby gas, causing the nebula to glow brightly. Also, under the wing on the right is a small shock wave, a bow shock, or is it pronounced bow shock, visible from some intense release of charged particles from the nearby star FN Canis Major, located just below it. 
for being only one hour of exposure time, I think this Seagull Nebula image came out remarkably well. It is almost flawless. However, both these images, for having been taken with a compact little Star Tracker unit, the Nomad from Move Shoot Move, are quite impressive. There was no star trailing using a 30 second exposure time. The resolution of this imaging rig configuration turns out to be 5.74 arc seconds per pixel, which is significantly undersampled with this camera, but regardless, still looks very good unless you zoom in very closely. I did notice one thing though about the Christmas Tree Nebula photo. Even though the star shapes are well controlled at 30 seconds, I still think there is a bit of a detectable drift going on. It is not evident in individual photos or in the stars of the final image, but take a close look at this zoomed section. Is it my imagination or does there appear to be a bit of streakiness toward the upper right of this image? It can be seen in various parts of the photograph. I believe this might be what is referred to as walking noise. Unfortunately, there is not a good way to correct for this with a star tracker like the Nomad. Theoretically, a perfect polar alignment and mechanically rigid rig would eliminate it. With full go-to astrophotography systems like my AM5 mount, this type of noise phenomena will be eliminated by guiding and dithering. Of course, on this system, neither guiding or dithering are possible. But I am not complaining. It was a very pleasant experience and I am very satisfied with the performance of the Nomad Star Tracker and this rig configuration. The imaging results actually exceeded my expectations. I struggled a bit this night with some errors and idiosyncrasies of the imaging rig the Arca Swiss ball mount especially. And I have some new ideas for improvements and a better understanding of the capabilities of this system. But of course, it involves buying more accessories. There I go again. I think it has great potential. I really like this particular imaging site. Time went by quickly, aided by some coffee and Japanese sake. And as the dawn started to break, it illuminated the beautiful natural scenery of the Pacific coastline. So I captured some video of my surroundings on top of these unique sandstone cliffs at the Ubata Utopia Cape. Not a person was encountered all evening, night, or morning. The serenity was mentally rejuvenating, and I was excited to get home and process my images. I had high hopes. Thank you for joining me on another Astrophotography Japan travel adventure. In Japan, I am JP Astro Guy. My name is Paul Cheesegel, and I really, really like astrophotography. Thank you.